Welcome to Yacht Crew Vlogs, where we tell the stories of those in the yachting industry. A behind the scenes look that discovers the individuals in the industry, their history, their passions, and what inspires them to do what they do. Hi everyone, and welcome to another edition of Yacht Crew Vlogs right here on Yachting International Radio. My name is Ria, I am your host, and I'm very pleased to welcome my new guest, Robert Smith. He is the co-founder of The Shadow Cat, and uh, Amelia Smith, she is support and marketing for Shadowcat. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to be here. Yeah, well, it's an absolute pleasure to have you because first off, a catamaran that is the shadow vessel. Now we are seeing straight across the board right now in, in the industry, more and more of these massive super yachts are being built and all of them are making sure to have a support vessel. I mean, we saw with Jeff Bezos the other day, he's got a support vessel for his girlfriend's helicopter. Everybody needs a support vessel and they're spending more and more time on their boats. You know, in the past, they would use them as pleasure cruises, perhaps two weeks here, two weeks there. We're seeing charters that are going for 90 days, 120 days. We're seeing super yacht owners buy their yachts, intending to live aboard. Um, and the necessity to have a shadow vessel is there. What is it about the shadow cat that makes it that little bit different? I think a... Uh, it's basically the size of the platform. A, um, you know, we're trying to get um, a, we're trying to get things off of the mothership. You know, a, um, we're trying to get tenders off the mothership. We're trying to get helicopters, helicopter activity off of the mothership. A, um, you know, we're trying to get a, the the beach set up. We're trying to get the jet skis. All of this minutia of essential equipment. Um, we we're wanting to get off and. Uh, and the, the, the cat is such a flat, wide open platform. A, uh, it's, uh, it, it's just the way, the way to go. You know, it's, um, I know it's new to the market, but to everybody that's got one is pretty happy. Well, Robert, let's find out a little bit about you. What is your history? Where are you from? And what got you to being the, the co-founder of Shadowcat? Hey, um, right. Well, I, I I started off. I went to sea when I was twenty one. Um, a uh, as an engineer, a uh, merchant navy. Uh, so worked my way through there to chief engineer. Um, decided to dabble my toes in the yachting market. So uh, I was actually I was heading to Australia to be a surveyor, and um, I got offered a, a position on a, a new construction yacht. Uh, I thought I'll go and do that for six months and then head off to Aussie and uh, ended up working in the working in this sector and loved it. He, um, been chief on some some quite nice vessels and he, uh, uh, did a, a what got involved in the shadow boats quite early on. We built one for a, a customer. A, um, for one of the first groups that were doing it, a, uh, an American company. And um, ever since then, I've been a big uh, exponent of it, of this is, you know, get your stuff onto one of these support vessels, you know. And so, and um, with the, the whole door behind us, that's, that's where we, we started the Shadowcat as a, as a brand for these, uh, uh, these, catamaran, these catamaran vessels. Uh, support vessels. Was that your brainchild, the catamaran, or was that a client that said we'd like to have a catamaran as a support vessel? We had explored. Um, there was, a, you know, I'll, I'll say mine. I, um, I think the first time it came up in conversation was with uh, there was two or three of us. We had a client. Uh, we and uh, he started talking about a shadow shadow vessel, and we happened to have a, a big a Tasmanian NCAT Crowther, a um, wave piercer next to us in port, which was for sale. So we went for a wander around this 100 meter thing and thought this would make a fantastic shadow vessel. But you know, at 100 meters and uh, 22 meter beam, it was possibly bigger than needed, but the idea always stayed. And um, for the, the client, the, the, the client for Podor, we, we were exploring um, the monohull option and uh, and there was just so many negatives that we we revisited the, the catamaran again. He uh, spoke to Incat Crowther uh, down in Australia, he, who this is 
this is what they do. They are the best in the business commercially at, at, at Naval Architects for these boats. And uh, and then, you know, Shadowcat was born. You know, the more we looked at it, the more we were, wow, geez, that's, you know, that ticks that box and it ticks this box. So uh, it just, you know, became a little bit of a no-brainer. Really, let me ask you, I mean, you know, the traditional uh, support vessel is the monohull. For you in support of marketing, how do you get the word out there that this is sort of the wave of the future? Yeah, absolutely. It's really critical for us to connect with not only mariners, um, we're finding that there are captains who make recommendations to the owners about what type of uh, support vessel might be needed for the super yacht. Um, so we're connecting with those uh, people through publications that cater to those audiences. Um, and we're doing some now so, some social media marketing, which is new for the company. Um, additionally, we're working with brokers that we have very strong relationships with. And um, we're doing advertising for the first time. So you'll start to see Shadow Cat in the market uh, much more prominently than in years past. It's good to know that. Let me ask you, Robert, when it comes to the super yacht industry, we have seen a huge, huge increase in the United States in the past year. Um, there are more and more built boats being built all the time. Are they tending to sort of, I know that there's been a few lately that they're actually building the super yacht at the same time as they're building the shadow vessel and they're matching everything up. It, it's, it's almost like, I don't know, husband and wife cars or something, but they're making sure that both of these yachts are identical in almost every way. Um, is that the, the trend of the future? I, th I think, uh, absolutely. I mean, what we, because the, the shadow vessel when it started, you know, it took a few, a little bit slow to pick up, but then there, there was more and more of them coming in and when people start to realise how useful they were. Now it's almost the next phase where, uh, you know, somebody's designing their yacht and, a, you know, so they've, they've got their shadow. Got, if, if only I had the shadow before, I would not have put this big tender on board or I would have moved the helicopter. I would have had the whole aft deck to myself. So... And uh, now they're, they're looking at it, you know, some very prominent people um, uh, have the, the light bulb has gone on and they're saying, right, okay, well, I can, I can have the whole aft deck to myself. I don't need my helicopter. I, and I can design, I can give my designer like carte blanche, a blank canvas where there's not a naval architect telling me, you know, he needs something. There's not the shipyard as well. You can't do this. We, you know, we need this back here or we've got large hull doors for big tenders. You know, all of a sudden, the all of that prime real estate where you have to put the toys becomes yours. So, yeah, uh, it, once you start looking at it like that, say um, your your yacht becomes just your yacht, and then all of that other things that you would put in the garage in your house, you wouldn't have the garage in the living room. You know, goes into the uh, goes into the shadow vessel, and, uh, and all of a sudden you have this beautiful, clean palette uh, to, for your designer to work with and um, you get to enjoy it without the workings of it, you know, that, that makes a charter or makes a, make sure, keeps the owner happy, you know, having all that stuff available, so. Well, and when we're looking towards the future, I mean, you know, we are seeing a real shift in the industry towards sustainability and yachting. Are catamarans easier to make more sustainable than the old-fashioned shadow vessel? They they're they're very efficient. You know they're the they're, they're more efficient hull. A um, you know to do so a cat needs to be fast. You know you want it to be able to 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 leave last and arrive early. So it's a bit of a requirement for it. A um, you know the the catamaran can do that with two main, two main engines, whereas a monohull needs four and needs a lot more power to 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 do that. So there's a saving there already. Um, within, I, I mean, we we do we do a lot of new builds, and and our focus is always very much on leaving no footprint. A, um, you know, you should never put a garbage bag on the dock, especially now with social media. You know, you just you can't. You've got these things have to be, um, you know, have to process, have to watch what you bring on board and watch what you take off. And the 
the catamarans, the, um, that, that's just down to the equipment selection. So, uh, and the client of the owner, they can be as green as, you know, it can, absolutely they can be green. And, uh, and we do that, all owners, it's, that's the trend, you know, like you said. I mean, it, it's, nobody ignores it now. Well, let me ask, how many have you built at this stage? And when did you start building them? Eight, oh, geez, when was that? Was 2019, delivered was in 2019. Yep. Yeah. And Wayfinder, the one that's behind me, the white one, was delivered in uh, 2020, excuse me, 2021, uh, just in April, actually. Yeah. 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 And uh, we've got uh, another one in the shed and, uh, you know, and, and quite a lot of interest. Hmm. Well, that's Happy really exciting news because, you know, um, I got to say, they, from the yachts that I've been on, and you know, recently I've been on quite a few, just the space in a catamaran. Um, I think we were talking off air about the fact that if you wanted to send your kids to the other side of the boat and not see them for the entire day, it's possible. Um, so it does really make sense when you're thinking about putting all of your toys, and there's just so much more space in the same sort of size. You know, if you're talking 50 meter, well, there's more space in a 50 meter catamaran than there is in a 50 meter monohull. Yeah, no, I mean, that, that, that's just exactly it. The, the, that's why it makes a great uh, platform for a, uh, for a support vessel. A, you know, we're, we're, we're putting on relatively light things. You know, a, a helicopter is not heavy. Big tenders are not heavy. You want a, a well, submarines can be quite heavy. But, a, uh, you know, the, and, all the, and all the other, the beach setup, um, all of you know, the dive boat, you just need space, and uh, and the the catamaran gives you that big open aft deck. You know, it gives you all of that space, and um, and the, and the flexibility. You know, that's the other thing. Um, you know, you you build your yacht, and you 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 make this um, space to put your tender in, and it fits in with millimeters. But you can never change it now because it's ultimately part of the furniture, you know. But you can, you know, you, know, you get fed up after six months of having whatever tender you have on the shadow, you know, you just change it, put a different one on. It, it, that flexibility is uh, it's quite great about that big, flat, big platform. You know, in addition to space, which is obviously a huge advantage for carrying cargo and accommodations, the catamaran platform is also more stable. So um, when you're craning the, the equipment on, and the toys off the side, say you're sending a submarine out of the hatch on the side, um, it's going to be much more stable and secure for the people on board. Um, and additionally, it offers that space for uh, full helicopters. You don't have to fold the, the wings and the rotors. Um, it, you can put just about anything you'd like on board from a gym, wellness center, you could do saunas, dive centers, scuba centers, anything you want uh, on board. It's, it's exciting. One thing that I see they're setting up on, on the support vessels nowadays is ski rooms. Mm. So, you know, they are heading more in, especially with excursion yachts becoming mm -hmm. the next greatest thing as well. Yeah. People aren't happy, you know, just going to sit in the middle of the Mediterranean anymore. They want experience. You know, they want to go the Pacific Northwest Passage. Um, they want to go heli skiing while, you know, he, the mom and dad want to go heli skiing, but the kids, they want to be taken to the local um, culture center, you know, to learn. So there is a need for so much more space on board. You know, a lot of these families are now homeschooling, which means the kids are on board homeschooling. They're going to need that extra space in order for those kids to, you know, they're going to need it as well, yeah. not just another chief stew. They're going to need a teacher on board. If they are planning on going to, going to these out of way spaces, they're going to need a medical center. You know, because some of these places you go, it's a two hour flight by helicopter. If you've got your kids on board, you want to make sure that you can take care of those kids. So a medical center and a doctor. So I yep. can imagine that, you know, something that is substantial, such as a shadow cat is going to be coming really, really important in the next few years. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, I mean, we have, we have um, you know, medical centre is, is one of the big ones, say, uh, recompression chambers, you mentioned diving, yeah. you know, uh, stabilise somebody after uh, if something goes wrong. You know, again, these items take up quite a lot of space, but the, the shadow cut has that space to put them in. So, uh, you know, safety, 
you know, those extra personnel to, to keep you safe, they can be on the shadows. So that, again, like as you said, that's um, it seems to be the way uh, that everybody's heading and, um, the, you know, for the bubble, not, not, not only just the COVID bubble, just your operational bubble now that, you know, we have everything we need to do what we want to do. Well, and they're also looking towards scientific investigation as well of the ocean and what's going on around yeah. in our planet. Um, you know, so it definitely does sound like you folks are on the right track. What is next for Shadowcat? Hey, um, it's, it's a more boats, I think. You know, we are interested in. We've got a we've got a forty-eight meter out there uh, concept um, aiming at you know the the seventy meter owner loves his boat but wants a bigger tender or, or or would like a helipad so and then we've got a uh we've got a big big concept out there for for somebody that's say um that's looking to to carry a lot of personnel you know a big support uh, so it, it's quite exciting that, this is the bit I love about it when you when you have somebody comes to you saying this is what I need and we get to deliver that that's the bit I really enjoy so more of that would keep me pretty happy to be honest yeah well you know what it sounds absolutely great and I would encourage everybody to head over to their website and check it out and if you are in the market to have your next shadow vessel uh, alongside your super yacht well definitely get a hold of them shadow cat is the name Robert Smith the co-founder yeah. of uh, <laughs> the Chateau Cat. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much, Ian. And Amelia Smith, uh, she is support and marketing for Chateau Cat. I thank you for your time. Of course, thank you. Once again, you've been watching uh, another edition of Yacht Crew Vlogs right here on Yachting International Radio. My name is Ria. I have been your host. We'll see you again next time. Mm -hmm.